2 Samuel 24, verse 10. David sent out the orders to number the people by Joab. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. He gave the command. Look who's in charge. That's a very important uh, idea in the Bible. A uh, husband's in charge of his wife, Ahab, with Jezebel. David gave the orders for Uriah to be killed. Uh, the, the thing is, when the government gives you an order to do something, you're obligated, if it does not conflict with the Bible, you're obligated to follow those orders. Now, when they tell you to go kill somebody in the name of war, that's not conflicting the Bible. So David is put in charge. He puts himself in charge. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly, and that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very, very foolishly. Now let's go to verse 1 again. Let's look at the context. 24 verse 1. Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to say, go number Israel and Judah. The anger is not with David. God's angry with Israel. God says, you know what? I'm going to bring a judgment upon them. I'm going to use Satan. We already saw that. But I'm going to use David also. To put the strength in the people. And when the people hear how great they are and how many they have, they're going to relish in the moment of the polls, familiar word today, of the population of the census, and then they're, they're going to get high in pride. And then I'm going to get them. Verse 1, the Holy Spirit records to us, it is not David's sin. It is nowhere found in the law where you are not to number the people. It's What's found in the in the Bible is you're not to put your strength in horses, in men, but in the Lord. So David's taken all upon himself. For when David was up in the morning, bright and early, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad. Now this is another prophet, David's seer, saying, David surrounded himself with prophets. Who spoke the word of God and did not speak falseness. You're going to see when we get into the kings and chronicles. You're going to see the kings of Israel, the northern tribe. They're going to surround themselves with all kinds of false prophets. And the prophet that does speak for God, oh, you know, I don't like him. So David puts himself around godly prophets in Seir. And the prophet uh, Gad, David's here saying, Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. Now where do you get that idea, verse 12? You ever hear that one before? I'll give you three wishes. I'll give you three ideas. Choose one. That's that Adam's lamp. Rub it and you get three wishes. Out of the Bible. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, Number one, shall seven years of famine come unto thee in the land? So that would be low and no food for the people of Israel who God's angry with. Again, using David, the king, the ruler, the majesty of the nation outside of God. I'm going to give you a choice. No food, no water. That's number one. Or wilt thou flee three months before thy enemies while thy while they pursued thee? Number two, leave the people of Israel with no leadership while you're running. Can't go to the to the Jerusalem. David's on the run. We can't go get help from the king. We may not know where he is right now. You want a man? You want the polls? You want numbers? You want a military? All right, number two, I'll take your military leader. I'll take the captain of your host. 
I'll put them elsewhere where you can't find them at all. You're only going to have to rely on me. You're going to have to rely on me if it comes to the family because David can't give you water. David can't make your crops grow. Or number three, or that there be three days pestilence in thy land, Israel, verse one. So that would be disease and death. And none of these touch David. Now advise. That's the first time that word shows up. Advise. This is Gad talking to David. Here, here's the three things that God's meant. All right, now advise me. And see what answer I shall return to him, God, that sent me. All right, David, it's up to you. Which one do you want? And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Oh, yeah. Three choices by God and none of them are good. Number two, I've already been under the fall of Saul. I don't want to do that again. No way. I've already been under that fall under Absalom and running. I don't want to do that again. The famine, I will suffer. My family will suffer. The people will suffer. I remember the great famines of Joseph's time and all that. Was it for Joseph and God, the people weren't, but man, that was hard time. Pestilence? Oh, that's so broad for God. Pestilence, what God did to the, to the animals in Egypt. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord. That's a good idea. For his mercies are great. So even in judgment, even still, judgment, there will be still mercy by God. That's what Job got angry with, you know? Forty days, then it shall be overthrown. God, I knew you were a merciful God. So if God were to bring one of these three plagues, I call them all plagues, David said, you know what? He's merciful. He's not going to wipe us all out. He can't. His own mouth testified by an oath and by a covenant to Abraham. And let me not fall into the hand of man. Do you realize, and maybe, you know, the most wicked man of our time, do you realize if Adolf Hitler had survived, how much damage he would have done and wanted to do? He showed no mercy. There are people today in America in the world, there are religions throughout the entire world that for some way they have people captive and they are torturing them. And they're absolutely showing no mercy at all. God's long suffering. So David says, let me fall in the hands of the Lord. Mercy, man has no mercy. Go ahead, drop that bomb and destroy five or ten cities and all the people here at Shema. There was no other way. Well, look at all the people that had to die. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. Maybe this nation got back to God. We got in prayer, got on our knees. Maybe God would have done something else. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel. So God says, okay, pestilence. What's pestilence? From the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Bathsheba. Israelites. Verse 1. God is angry with Israel. Not David. 70,000 men. That's a lot of men. I'll give you a number. Give you 70,000. And when the angel, oh, an angel is doing it. One angel has killed 70,000. And we'll read later on that one angel wipes out almost an entire army. But if Jesus said, hey, 
if I can call down legions of angels, can you imagine what legions of angels would have done about 33 AD, about that time? Where one angel, just 70,000 men dead. When the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, that angel's going from Dan to Bathsheba. He heads back to Jerusalem. And on his mind, I'm going to destroy Jerusalem. The Lord repented him of the evil. That's the mercifulness of God. That's in the book of Jonah. That's calling Noah and his family into the ark. The evil. Evil is the consequence of sin. Israel has sinned, verse 1. God says judgment. God told Jonah, the wickedness of Nineveh has come up to me. I'm going to send judgment. Noah, this violent and imaginary wickedness of these people. And God sent Noah. Repent is where God has turned around. Imagine if God had no repentance that's preached today, not in the churches. What if the repent of the churches today in the modern world, God would have repented the way the modern, all of Israel would have been wiped out and just the angels standing there. That repent means the action of judgment is happening. It is falling. People are dying because God says so. And God said, I repent, stop, turn around, go the other way. No longer are people dying. No longer is the judgment of God. Angels, stop. Now, what is that reaction to be to our sin? As that angel's carrying out the judgment, as we carry out sins, and God says, repent, stop, and turn away, and have no more sin. As that angel, the angel put no more judgment. Once God said, I repent, stop. Put that action through our sin. Repented the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people. That's quite interesting because is not the angel passing the judgment of God here? Did not God send two angels into Sodom with Lot? And did they not tell Lot that God is going to destroy this city? God sent us to burn up this city. And then we get into the fact is, when you get into that night of the Passover, and God says, I'm going to send the death, I'm going to send into those places. God uses angels to destroy, and yet God is the author of that angel. And when you read last, well, the other night's, 2 Samuel 24, where the devil made me do it. No, God actually gave the devil permission, giving the credit to the Satan. Those angels destroyed Sodom under the power of God. Thus God ordered it. God destroyed Sodom. This angel is destroying the children of Israel. God allowed it. God told him. God's the one doing it. But the tool is the angel. And we got to realize Satan is a tool of God, Job 1 and 2, with limitations that God says, Say, okay, you do this, but you can't do that. You stop right there. Where is that line? I'll tell you that line. 2 Samuel, it says over here in 2 Samuel 24, 1, and again, the anger of the Lord was kindled. And when you read in 1 Chronicles 21, 1, it says, Satan a very fine line it's a very fine line god is angry with israel he said okay satan go ahead tell david the number children of israel let's see their pride go ahead satan walks up to david says david i got a good idea for you what's that we'll number the people okay so watch out who your ideas are who are they of god or the devil yourself sometimes that line is very fine all right, Job, what's the Job's case? Who did it, God or Satan? Well, Satan. God gave him permission yet, but God gave him permission. What's that fine line? Job sinned. Self-righteous. Where are we not too quick to say the devil made me do it? It may be God, it may be the devil, it may be you. But look at this angel. 
Look at repentance. And the angel that destroyed the people, it's enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ. Before he was born in the manger. Here he's on the way to Jerusalem to destroy it. When he comes to be born in that manger, he heads to Jerusalem. He's coming to save the people. But where there's no blood, there's no Calvary, there's no sacrifice, there's no Lamb of God, there's judgment. He that has not the Son, he that shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Now, I'm not saying they look forward to Calvary. I'm not saying that. There is no Calvary. There is no bloodshed. They're complete wickedness. They're in sin. They are in judgment. And that angel passes that judgment on. It will be Jesus Christ seated at the great white throne judgment. Say, depart from me, to ye that work in iniquity. I never knew you. The one that suffered and died. The one that says God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That son, that lamb of God. Will cast them off into hell forever. Because they don't have the blood of atonement. The angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor. That's the only pl uh, threshing place. That is the only place that word shows up. And it's an interesting place. We're going to fit up one more verse. And we're going to close. And we're going to. Very important study coming up. Threshing place. You check out these threshing floors. They're not very good places in the Bible. Be a place of wheat and or barley. Where they would beat the wheat. And thrash it up in the air. Let the chaff get blown away. And down would come down. You would have oxen working. You had men working. Of threshing place of Arnhem. The Jebusite. Remember we read about the Jebusites? That's where Benjamin is. That's the land where Jerusalem is. We are in Jerusalem area. We are in Benjaminite area. And David spake unto the Lord. When he saw the angel that smote the people. Though he's looking at that angel. Like Balaam. After the third time when that angel finally revealed, revealed himself. He saw that angel. Oh man. They impressed terror. Saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned. No, you didn't, David. The people did. But what God's going to do for you right now, he's going to set up the most important ever land deal that ever to be happened. It needs to be by the king of Israel. It needs to be a type of Jesus Christ. It needs to be a throne where Jesus Christ will be established. It needs to be the sure mercies of David. Saul could not do what David was going to do. Saul was not humble enough as da David's taking the blame. Isaiah 53, Jesus Christ take on our iniquity. Jesus Christ took on our trespasses. Jesus Christ bore our sins. Jesus Christ took our, our iniquity. David's taken it for the people of Israel. I have sinned. Christ never sinned, but he bared our sins. David didn't sin here. It's not his fault. But look at him. I have done wickedly. No, the people have. 24.1. But these sheep. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Jesus says, I'm the shepherd. David's the shepherd. He was a shepherd of the sheep. Look, look, look what he's doing. He's a shepherd, a shepherd boy. And he's treating an entire nation of people as they're my sheep. I take care of them. I love them. I me give them medicine. I, I bring them to the proper places. I protect them. I, I slay the bear. I slay the lion. I, I feed them. They're my people, Lord. What have they done? <laughs> Read verse 24-1. Read that. And he doesn't know what they've done. Did Job ever know what happened? No. Let thy hand, speaking to God, I pray thee, be against me. Wow. He's saying, let me take the beating for them. Isaiah 53. 
That's what, you know, we, we assume what happened in heaven. When man Adam sinned, he says, Father, I've got to go down and do it. There's nothing. We'll give them animal sacrifices, but that's not going to do it. I got to do it. And he says over and over in John, I came in the Father's will. Father's will is to save humans. And against my father's house, that's he's speaking for Jesse. Let it be all upon the name of David and my fathers and my fathers and my fathers and my fathers. And you run that all the way back to Adam. David's acknowledging, you know what David's acknowledging right now? I am a sinner. Now Christ never sinned. But we are going to get in a very important step next before we close this chapter. Very historical event going to happen. We're going to close right there.